Hello and welcome to Quackcast number 334. This is Ozone Ocean and I'm here with Pitface the Archaeologist, uh, Tansarine. Oh my! <laughs> Tansarine the, the uh, Pedagogologist. <laughs> what? And Baines the Real Astrologist. <laughs> yeah. uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Tans is still bemused by that. Um, <laughs> now we're going to be talking about uh, figure drawing and how to do it. This is a, a based Again. on... <laughs> yeah. This is based on a quick cast <laughs> we did a couple of weeks ago, but also a news post I did on Friday. So we've, we've got that to base it on. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But first I have to introduce, oh my God, the featured comic... Hello, I'm Ozone Ocean, of course, and uh, the, we have two features this week, not just one. That was because the Quackcast last week didn't quite work, and uh, so we're doing it again. So this time, the first feature is Sword of Kings by Bravo One One Zero Two. Fierce battles with sword, spear, bow and hammer, vicious Norsemen, hungry ghouls, scheming sorceresses and nobles. Sword of Kings is an epic saga of ambition, conquest and love. Written, constructed and directed by Bravo. This is a whole new take on the original story, Go a Viking. Original story by Bravo, that is. It's still an epic adventure, but this time he's honed the story and tried a whole new art style. It's... Uh, historically influenced fantasy the art consists of photography of dressed up figures posed against sets and then digitally manipulated and uh, in this version lots of filters put on over the top of them <laughs> so he, he, uh, he creates his comics much like you would a film set very much like that you know creating sets breaking them down um, dressing figures all that kind of stuff and yes, this is a, uh, uh, a dramatic action adventure, historical fantasy sort of tale. So get on board and uh, have a read. Bravo. It's rated M. For the okay, so the featured comic for the week was The Chicken Warrior, which uh, is oh. got some really interesting looking art. So I can't wait to hear about that so quite take it away Ch the chicken warrior hello this is quite a Gakse, and the feature i've selected for this week is the chicken warrior by smackin kraken and it is rated t14 no one in the village is quite sure how the chicken warrior came to be there is speculation that he choked a chicken or at least hung it before placing the skin on top of his head and wearing it as a helmet. There is a horrible beast that looks like an evil goat loose, and it has captured Princess Helen. It looks like the chicken warrior is the unexpected answer to the king and queen's prayers. The art is mostly in black and white and drawn using digital ink. There is highly skilled usage of line strokes and shading techniques that is quite impressive. You should read this comic if you have an insatiable hunger for puns, or at least really like the Conan the Barbarian series. Read The Chicken Warrior by Smack and Kraken, rated teen. And that was our uh, Kwai featuring the uh, Chicken Warrior. And the featured music this week by Gum Wallace is... I can't pronounce this one. It's either it's either Kerintha or Surintha. Surintha. And mm. I would describe this as being uh, classical, careful, creepy. The clarinet plods along methodically while the violin skips and dances. It's 
the pure piano tones ring out like tinkling bells, sparkling with light and joy. So enjoy Gummolus's take on Serintha by Cope Redded T. Serintha by Gumwallis and of course the comic is by Cope and it's read T okay so the quack cast is going to be well it is about figure drawing which is something that we all do in all our comics at least us four I know there are lots of people who don't have to do figure drawing because they're either you know taking photos of things or 3D modelling or Ah, uh, maybe they're comics about anthropomorphic toasters or something like that. But a good amount of us, especially us four, do figure drawing. So we have to know about it. And we've... we've Photo all... comics aren't, aren't real comics. <laughs> oh, trigger. Everybody knows that, right, Bravo? <laughs> Just in case, in case he's listening. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> Oh god, that's gonna blow up on the Twitter sphere now, Baines. Oh, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to have some kind of rap battle between you. <laughs> East Coast, West Coast <laughs> feud. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna end in death. I know it. <laughs> so we'll I... just begin in death at the same time. <laughs> uh, I did a whole news post about this, so we can I can read through it. Or, you know, just read through the important parts. Or just use it to help me remember the bloody things we did in our last Quackcast about figures. Read through it! Read through it? Yeah, Yeah, give it a read. Give people some context for this uh, this stuff. All right. This hibbity-jibbity. This (laughs) hibbity-jibbity. It's this (laughs) 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 whippersnappering. So, all right. Here we go. Let's talk about figure drawing again. We've discussed this in the past, but it's always worth talking about. In fact, one of the Lost Quack casts was on this very subject. Well, don't we know it? Figure drawing isn't easy. You need constant practice to maintain the skill. If you neglect it, it degenerates slowly over time. As for myself, I've always had a knack for figure drawing as a kid. I drew the life models in high school and later on in art school and university. Outside of an academic environment, I've often been to life modeling classes and I've studied skeletons, underlying muscle culture, muscle culture, muscles, uh, the comparative body shapes of other mammals, people of different shapes and sizes, different ages, clothed as well as unclothed drapes, speed drawings, statues, etc. And yet, my drawing of figures are no more realistic than anyone else's. In fact, they're a little less ris- realistic due to my over stylization and often being quite stiff. But, if drawing from life is the gold standard for doing good figure drawing, how can that be? Well, firstly, because I don't keep up my practice, and secondly, figure drawing from, you know, uh, life drawing is not actually the gold standard and never has been. That's a a miss... um, Nomer? Understanding. (laughs) Life drawing teaches (laughs) you a few specific lessons. How figures look and 
when they pose from a three dimensions, how weight, mass, and gravity affect them in different poses, the typical shapes of certain body parts, uh, you know, the position of ankle bones, uh, the curve of the shin, the bow of the forearm, that kind of thing, um, and the effects of light and shadow. Life drawing comes from fine art, where you would have a person pose so you could do your own visual copy them, either in sculpture or painting, so you can get a more accurate version of that uh, person. Comics don't feature too much of that. If you want to be good at drawing figures for comics, there are other skills you have to pick up. Be wary of learning from photos. Photos are an artificial representation of reality. There's the old myth that uh, goes uh, the camera never lies, which is not quite true. Cameras catch an impossible split second in time. They see reality in ways that we don't and we can't. Strange fleeting expressions, you know, when someone's uh, blinking and looks like they're having a uh, seizure. Uh, floating body mass as someone moves or jumps, distortions due to the size and shape of a lens, which is extremely common. Artificial flattening, which happens all the time due to focal length. Uh, digital cameras are even worse since the sensors adjust for colour and light to create new and strange distortions. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Photography is useful, but inferior to life drawing when you want to understand reality. So it's a guide, not something you should rely on as being the complete accurate uh, thing to uh, to draw from and that'll help you uh, capture reality better. It's not quite. Life drawing is a good basic foundation, but most comicers can't use that. So here are a few things you need to learn. Okay, simple wireframe in poses that you want. As long as your proportions are right, this helps you get a good, helps you get good at poses and positioning. Simplify body parts into basic geometric shapes. This helps you with mass and perspective on unusual poses. Okay. Uh, look at how others have drawn their figures or poses that you want to draw. Copy them so you can understand how they did it. Do not use the copied work as your own though. Only do it for practice. Stay away from styles. Do not ape the styles of others and do not learn from very stylized art like manga or Disney. This will handicap you. Don't try to develop your own style either. All this comes later. When you understand how real figures work, only then should you dive into the styles of others. Your own style will happen naturally later. Now, assuming you're well down the road of comic drawing, how do you capture these tricky poses? Well, get a maquette which is a small posable figurine, or get a couple of them so you can uh, get your figure drawing, your figure interaction better, because uh, figures together are a lot harder to do than just drawing one figure by itself. Do quick sketches of real people in the poses that you need if you have access to them, or you know, just randomly on the street if you can manage that. Just quick sketches, not actual, you know, models posing. Photos of yourself or other people are useful guides. Look at the work of other artists. Use a mirror to draw yourself. Mirrors are a fantastic tool. As you are the best model for most things. Most importantly, practice. Practice is, is by far the most important part. The more you do, the better you get. There are really no rules though. People have different approaches and what I've said here is only a guide. There are professional comicers who have never drawn from life or even a realistic figure. They've, they've never even drawn a realistic figure. So they don't need it. There are manga artists who've started with that style and never moved outside of it. People who have always drawn in their own individual style you know, they, they hit on it straight away and they've always done it. There are comic artists who use life drawing for all their figures, so there are even those sort of people. Um, there, and there are plenty who of people who simply trace from photos from for all their figures. They just trace them from photos. There are others... That's the best way to do it. <laughs> there are others whose work mainly consists of work copied from others, and you please don't follow that example. Please don't. And there are people like me who think that drawing from your own imagination is enough. Which, uh, again, 
that's not such, such a great way but that's what I do um, and all those approaches are great and it's really just a matter of whatever does whatever gets the job done but the thing is you don't want to find yourself locked in by your own limitations which is where all those sort of approaches lead to you want to be able to um, move outside of that which you know if you if you find yourself locked into all those sort of things you'll find that it's it's a bit more difficult to uh to expand or improve all right so that that's my big spiel i i read it <laughs> it's good stuff man awesome, awesome. there's some things i missed you out, but seem to know what you're talking about i seem that's the that's the important yes. thing give the impression <laughs> that's all you ever need <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think that does it. I think we could call this this uh, a cast. Yes. Right. Now take this, people, and go forth and draw some stuff. Go forth and Bye. prosper. Yes. You wankers. Yes. <laughs> All right. We we have some great bum, 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 great bum, contributions bum. that we can read out. But do you guys? Uh, can you guys think of anything else that I perhaps might have missed with my great? Um, dissertation on figure drawing what Mm-mm. what is some little uh, my, my contribution is in the post uh, in the postings in the comments oh so I passed excellent I also had a little uh, technique I, I heard about recently that I haven't really tried I've only tried a little bit but um, it's it's just a little PS to what you said and sort of tagging up on what you said um, to if you're you are drawing from real life or or a photo reference um, the technique is to look at the photo or the you know model for um, just a couple seconds you take a quick look you take it all in and then you don't look at it anymore you cover up the photo you know you turn away from the whatever and then you draw and you oh. try to create just going from your sort of impression in your memory um, and, you know, try to draw it and sort of develop that as a skill. And the person who suggested this, I'll try to find the link so we can add it. But I don't remember what, who it was, but um, it's on YouTube somewhere, said that that is sort of a way of training your observation skills, but also drawing from memory and not getting caught up in, like, you know, drawing the little details as opposed to the overall, you know, yeah, sort that's... of pose or the overall sort of arc of mm-hmm. the person or the, the position they're in or the feeling you're trying to create. You're actually using your imagination and you're, you know, sort of flexing your that part of your brain a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. Like a good idea. I like that idea, that's yeah. No, go ahead. No, no, Tans, I was just agreeing. What were you saying? I was going to say that um, what Baines mentioned reminded me of a um, very nice exercise that I used to do not very often, but definitely when I was bored in class. And the thing, it was uh, that you take a dynamic line, like a squiggly line or something that that denotes movement, and and then along this dynamic line you create a, a human figure so the dynamic line has to be this. and uh, out of this you have to create a pose very very quickly not more oh, than cool. five five seconds ten seconds tops. Oh. so um, and that helps a lot actually are making figures in, in, in your comic that you start basically with the spine and that's and the spine will be your dynamic line so okay. so you draw the picture in five to ten seconds yeah. is that what you do? I'm sorry yeah well oh, okay. not cool. a figure a very like very a stick figure or whatever yeah like a stick like um like a, those bathroom door <laughs> Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a set head and and just the the shapes denoting where the pelvis and, and the torso would be and the arms and legs. Right. 
and the enormous okay. genitalia. <laughs> I, I've heard of like taking pictures or taking your what you your imagination or whatever and breaking it down and like doing that line of action first. That center of gravity, or, or I guess more so the line of action to figure out the pose. But I've never. Uh, yeah, that's a great variation on it. Makes sense to me. Well, that's interesting. It really is a, an interesting technique. We'll have to because that's particular to comic this. drawing, right? Like we're not drawing like still lives generally. I mean, that could be an aspect of it, but if you're drawing comics, you're drawing kind of like figures. You're drawing people in motion, in their various circumstances or whatever. So that's yeah, it. you know that's the kind of stuff we want, right? Yeah, exactly. Drawing um, from life and comic drawing are slightly different sort of skills. Drawing from life teaches you how to draw people, but you know it, it's uh, it has a bias to more static shapes. Whereas comic is comics are more about um, showing action and dynamics. yeah, you're creating an emotional tone. Yeah, there's a dynamic, there's dynamics to it. <laughs> Precisely. Cool. Precisely. Excisely. <laughs> Excisely. <laughs> um, all right. So we have a few uh, tips here from our contributors. Uh, Morgan is the first. Would you want to read out Morgan's face? Yes. Yes. Morgan. Hey, Morgan. Mor Morgan says... Big boobies are popular. You can forget to draw a head, but no one notices if there are big boobies to look at. <laughs> Morgan is Ozone that's, Ocean's That's all mother. you need to know. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it, it distracts you from um, other things. So that, that is a good technique. Um, of course, it's, it's, it's hilarious, but... A technique. <laughs> if... If you can distract people from your limitations, then you can solve some issues. If you can't do the proper figure drawing, you know, like you, you can cover someone's body in, in flowing hair, a flowing coat, cape, these kind of additions really people help. People get dazzled oh. by that. That's a good point. Yeah. So you can... You can uh, use these kind of things or you know distract them with big boobs that helps <laughs> that's a good trick or you could even create controversy by whether you are drawing the boobs properly or <laughs> whether you are being that's right very, get everybody very... talking about your, your pictures sex is the guy drawing boobs unrealistically <laughs> oh god that bloody facebook uh, post about this is how you do them. You don't do them that way. Oh God! I gotta educate you all now, because because no. we know there's there's no other way to look at boobs except for my picture here. Of course, you can't just yeah. find them in ten seconds in the search. I had someone try to call me out once on drawing unrealistic image. Really? <laughs> what? But, yeah. Yeah, they were. It, it, yeah, it was for. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was for some fan art I had made of um, one of the porno comics on the duck from way back in the day. It was like this sci-fi comic. I can't remember what it was called, but it was like this. It was really weird, but I really liked the art style and stuff. So I made some fan art for it once, and somebody wrote back, you know. Boobs are never perfectly round and circular like that stuff. So I'm like, well, she's got big feet. Hooters that are like yeah, being held big, up big by ones. like her her carriage, like her <laughs> like like her clothing was like keeping them up. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out of all the things, man, somebody somebody needed to to fix that part of the world. I guess just that drawing. <laughs> I mean. Someone had a well, agenda. It's a man explain to you how boobs should go. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I mean, I might not have a good pair myself. I like my girls to kind of stay out of the way. They they know how to behave. But I mean, I don't kind of understand a little you know, bit uh, the physics. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've grabbed a hooter in my day. <laughs> oh God, I've been to hooters, and that didn't teach me anything about how boobs should look. <laughs> <laughs> 
so my reply was, of course, Boobology is a careful science. There are specific ratios to observe. Too big, and the effects you get across is gross and unappealing, although you can get pretty big before that happens. The uncanny boob valley, or cleavage is the other word, is pretty We, we got what she did there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for explaining it, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's very scientific, yeah. There's, uh, you know, all sorts of dots and dashes and ratios, mass equations. Mm-hmm. It's a scientific <laughs> work. So next up we have Kim Luster. Tarts, would you like to read Kim Luster for us, please? <laughs> um, I can try. Mm, okay. So I suppose you you want me to to try Kim Luster's <laughs> classic. Kim. Yeah. <sighs> mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Good stuff. All oh, good advice. Oh, come on, dude. This is my friend. Oh, Oz, what are you doing to him? Oh, Gross. Uh, it has words. The post has words like big in them, okay? The, what are you doing to me? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look. But... I like how she suddenly just kind of dealt with it. Like she was in the middle of protest. She just goes, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I could, uh, be like, Do you want- I could try to be a hypocritical nun and, and be a prude that is secretly turned on or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> Give me Never mind. I think she does this deliberately in her post. It's amazing. I, I, I do think so as well. So, okay, all good advice, but the biggest, which you emphasize over and over, <laughs> is practice doing it over and over. <laughs> Never do that to me again, okay? <laughs> and eventually, muscle memory kicks in, like... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's paying attention to what she's saying, by the way, okay? Like No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't have to keep looking at references to draw an ear, right? <laughs> but hands, knowing good hands, I still have to look at references. Fix or my own hands. <laughs> A lot. Wow, that was way better than I've ever done it. Uh, <laughs> never do that again. Uh, anyway, but see, see what she's saying it does have it does have a lot of merit. Like if you practice over and over and over, um, your hands eventually do remember how to draw certain things. Hands can and draw then yeah. you can you can absolutely yeah. skill. The well, more you do it. It's, it's, Drawing is all about muscle memory. It's training your eyes, but it's training your body as well. And it's a very specific skill. She's definitely correct in that. It's um it's like a martial arts or anything like that, but it's I would say drawing is a far more uh intricate and advanced skill than martial arts would ever be. It takes a lot longer to learn good drawing than it does uh fighting skill. And yeah, you have to. Get I I wouldn't know about that. I wouldn't know about that one. Depends on what you mean, good fighting skill. Well, you know, so, um, uh, a lot of martial arts consist of rote uh, skills that you have to learn. You know, oh, these are the blocks to do. These are the punches and that kind of stuff. And yeah, the, but if you cannot implement it creatively, you will end up actually not being to do what the martial art. Is supposed to be doing. Exactly, is... exactly, but the same with drawing you... as well. You exactly. To... What, no, what I'm saying is that I think that they are compatible, just different different um, sets of spatial, spatial skills. 
Yes, yes. One's bigger and more intricate and smaller. But I still think it's more advanced because I'm a drawer, not a fighter. <laughs> and I'm biased. <laughs> you make art, not war. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, next up we have Mr. Bravo. Should we force Baines to do it and then we can force Pitt to do Tans? Okay. <laughs> force force okay. being the, Don't the do operative that. word. Okay. Good time. Why do you want me to read your voice? Yeah, what are you we, are, we, are ser- we are serving his fantasies right now, and, and oh. I don't think that oh. enabling is proper. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read you like some fucking Kim Luster. I, I I have dignity when I do my voices. Okay. <laughs> are you saying Tans doesn't? Oh my! Shots fired. Shots oh, fired. Uh. I don't think any of us have dignity. I don't know. It's all right. I mean, it's all it's mutual now. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the sad truth, man. It's that just the truth. That's that's gonna be my <laughs> phrase now. Shots fired. Okay, Baines, give us some bravo. One, one. Okay, now get ready for some actual sexy. <laughs> I... <laughs> or horses or whatever. It's well, making me sweaty, Baines. That's making me sweaty. Here's Bravo. <laughs> Sticks and geometric shapes are what it's all about. <laughs> it kills me every... <laughs> Even just posing those maquettes, you have to consider that. And what a great tip I borrowed from diorama builders. Always model the figure at the extreme effort of a fluid pose. For the most dynamism and drama. Another thing with using figures is you can look at the whole range of a pose to pick what is most dynamic, appealing, and works best. And body language. Watch how people hold their hands or, or just stand and fidget. Use that to convey what a character is saying. Sometimes it can say uh, more than a whole page of dialogue. <laughs> Don't Very you true. know? Yeah. <laughs> As a by the way, Humans can do more poses than the maquette shown. They make ones that have more realistic anatomy and greater range of motion. The gray guys and gals in my comic, the Rob... Oh, femoid, <laughs> series are examples. Robo-femoids. <laughs> uh, you poor bastard. Uh, it never, never fails. You'll never get that right. <laughs> I know. Awesome. Yeah, that figure shown is um, a piece of crap. A friend gave that to me, and I didn't even want it. He just gave it to me and said, "Okay, this is this is for you. you I know you've been admiring it for so." And I, I never admired it at all. I was always putting it in stupid <laughs> poses when I was in his studio. But he gave it to me, and now it's mine. Oh well. <laughs> I, I have one of those, and they're a cool little sculpture to have sitting there. But I've never found it. Uh super useful yeah. for me anyway I've just never known how to use it really properly but it can't do human poses right it's, it's hands are too big it's hips are too narrow it's just not and it's got to stick up it's ass yeah it's true <laughs> it's bottom can't move so it's attitude <laughs> wait you mean literally <laughs> Uh, all right, Pit. Anyway, Tansy's next. Give us some tans. Lay some tans okay. on us. Spray us with tans. Okay. Pizzerine. Uh, that sounds too intimate. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would also say study gross anatomy. Teach your brain to anticipate how muscles work, how they are placed in the body, and what there exists beneath the skin. Most like the skeletons you draw that you mentioned your post. Uh, (laughs) That way the stick figure or the mannequin will use the pose your character will be complemented by your capacity to draw properly how the muscles have relaxed in contracted to place the body in the position you want and it won't feel like a puppet relying on your pencil's invisible strings. Great post. Oh, 
Oh, thank you, Tom. That that sounded like a a lecture. The university. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) By a Russian professor. Oh, that, that you sound it. kind of Russian y tinge. That's a little bit. That's related. That's true. That's true. <laughs> very, very <fluent. laughs> I did a great job. Well done, Pit Face. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> yes, well done. Bravo. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. Hey, hey, compared to how I make the rest of these jackasses sound, you're lucky, Tinge. <laughs> <laughs> I am super lucky. <laughs> Yes, the way the stick figure or mannequin you will use, you pose the character. That's interesting. Um, yeah, muscles. Think about what the muscles would have been doing when you're moving your character. Think about it, because they do... The body of, is a machine! Yeah. Yes. Noodle arms. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's the thing. So there's some muscles that will move out of the way and contract. So you've got the the man with the huge biceps, but the biceps don't, you know, bulge all the time. Or you know, the woman mm-hmm. with the huge biceps. Oh, <laughs> Unless you're on steroids. Whereupon, you know, forget anatomy. It's all like a big blob. With mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you inject the uh, the uh, the synthol, I think it's called. They inject the oil into their bodies. Uh. And it's uh, bulges in rather unusual places, yeah. But we're talking about real people here, yeah. And muscles sort of, yeah, have to shift around and do their thing. Hmm. And boobs as well, apparently, according to that Facebook meme. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, uh, Cam. Cam says, I'll have to do this. Uh, so Cam says, um. Brother's comment about the figure at extreme effort, that reminds me of the comic book artist who would use his uh, photo of a pitcher throwing a fastball as a reference for drawing a superhero throwing a punch. Oh, hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So extreme yeah. effort, not normal effort. So he's not doing a normal boxer throwing a punch, but he's having a... um. A guy throwing a fastball, which is a different kind of move. Yeah. To exaggerate the the pose, which is interesting. Yeah. It's, it's a cool idea. Mm-hmm. So if you want to say someone, so you get that whole body going forward with that one motion, because all of all of the, yeah, I could see why that'd be that'd be very effective. Yeah, you're like leaning way <laughs> forward, and your one leg is probably thrown up in the air. Or something like that. <laughs> Wind up that punch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really wind it up. <laughs> when he says that, I totally see it, because you see a lot of uh, that in the superhero comics, you know, back in the day. That Yeah. Well, they, they do usually fly in and punch you. They don't yeah. punch that, like, normal mortals. So, right, they might be punch. acrobatically, like, crawling along or, or <laughs> swinging yeah. in, flying in or <laughs> jumping down or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're they're very acrobatic. Ah, oh, that's that's a good point. So if you yeah, look for someone who's doing an exaggerated version of what you want to do. So not a normal kick, but some sort of weird flying kick from kung fu movie or something. <laughs> that's a bad example, but yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> someone kicking a football. There well, we are. Don't, don't, use those. Yes. don't use movies where they use. Uh... Invisible planes to lift everyone because nobody's using their muscles to yeah. to jump. Yeah, exactly. Exploding. It looks terrible. That's why those movies look so bad because the movements look false. So they always look yeah. fake. All right. Well, next up we have. Ud- oh damn it! Oh dear. That's how you pronounce the name. Udia. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, so Tance, should you do oh, oh dear, it's it's your turn but, you know, do you want to? I'm not going to force you sure. this time. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, there is no weird connotation, so... <laughs> no, none at all. There's none at all. <laughs> so you can... 
<laughs> you can make one if you want. No, I, I do have some standards. I have to pretend I am forced to fix. So um, I don't know. So, <laughs> have to pretend. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had one of those dolls, and they are so stiff. At least, my oh my god, do I have to be luck? <laughs> and they're so stiff. At least mine were. <laughs> it was hard to even make it look natural. I think gesture drawing is nice to know when doing comics. You can spend 30 seconds to one minute, etc., on drawing poses, as well as go a bit in depth into how muscles work, work and where they are located. I'm currently trying to study muscles myself, and it's pretty interesting stuff. My sister were, was a physiotherapy student for a while, so I got her books on anatomy. Yay! Go to the library and find books about it is also nice. YouTube has a lot of cool teachers and people going into depth in anatomy. Proko and Zaza are pretty good in my opinion. Posemaniacs.com is good for gesture drawing as well as sensistock.com. Oh. And that's it. There you go. Interesting. <laughs> so she's given us a link. Census stock. Yeah, there are some sites that are good for um, showing different poses and things. And there's even ones that show uh, 3D models you can move around into the right kind of position. And that can be yeah. a, a useful guide. Um, yeah, and there are ones that, that train you in figure drawing as well. Yeah, showing you poses for a certain amount of time and then switching over to another one. Um, I actually downloaded on one of my old tablets uh, this um, thing. It, it's uh, it gives you a bunch of three D posable models. You can actually pose in whatever pose you want. So you can move the the hands and the fingers and the the heads and everything like that into the poses you require for the drawing but the problem with that was they don't have perspective on the camera where you you know you're angling all this this body around so oh it really comes out flat. Oh. so which means yeah. say if you've got a, a body with a hand reaching out in front of it the hand is there's no perspective on it so rather than the hand being huge and sort of blocking out the rest of the face the hand is tiny even though it's oh, moved in front yeah. which can never give you a very accurate image. You can only really draw a figure in the flat. You can't really draw it for shortened. Uh, yeah, for shortening involves a lot of. Well, that's yeah. You need that, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it completely changes it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, what's Pitt doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's altering her feature facial features. Um, all right. So next up we have Ozone Ocean, and we had Tarts reading. So I think we. So are... you missed your chance. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Oh, yes. You missed, missed your chance. <laughs> you. All right. So we'll have Pitface read Ozone. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here we are. Okay. Good, good advice. Keep it coming. <laughs> Market shown is crap. I can't use it. See, I now everybody sounds the same. I'm, I'm just. I'm gonna <laughs> try. We're gonna turn into pit face now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good advice is keep it coming. The market showed is crap. I didn't use it for anything. A, a friend gave it to me years ago. I think it came from Ikea. They were selling them as gimmicky home decoration things. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> oh, that, that, sounds, that sounded like Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> <laughs> Jory Day is a very dangerous day. Oh, wow, that. that's perfect. <laughs> oh, I miss it. Oh. <laughs> They've, there's new you're, you're our Rocco, Ozone. Oh, 
This new episode. Is there? Yeah, Rocco has returned. What are we doing on here? Let's go watch Rocco. And everybody else <laughs> out there should turn this off and go watch Rocco too. It's the best yep. cartoon ever. Mm-hmm. Back to the 90s when things were good. <laughs> when Bill Clinton was in power. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Next up we have Lusty Kim. Kim Luster. Um, I'll I'll have a go at it this time instead of forcing my my compatriots. All right, <laughs> she says. I got a couple of anatomical models from Dick Blick. <laughs> They're pretty useful. Price is pretty steep, but not totally outrageous. So just go to W www dot dick blick dot com slash products slash art slash buck anatomical dash models slash oh thank you that loves it's the role you were born to play in <laughs> so yeah you can you can get uh, she's given us a link there you can get the little uh, grey models of the people and they're, they're pretty good they're way better than a wooden fake anatomical model that uh, I posted up so. oh are these actual these aren't like software like 3D model things they're no, actual uh... these are plastic posable people uh. Yeah, your little plastic friends. Mm. Use them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, next up we have uh, CD Malcolm One. So who who are we? Oh, it's. Damn it! I'm okay. I think it's Pitt. No, no, Pitt. It's Baines. Your your turn. Well, I copied, copied, copied until I got it. The figure drawing thing was okay, but it was the gesture drawing combined with figure drawing that was what really did it for me. I never used gesture. I never used the maquette because I thought that it always looked unnatural. Humans worked better for me. Keep them in my basement. (laughs) No, I don't know. (laughs) Comic drawing... I don't know what this voice is supposed to be. I'm lost. Comic drawing came from almost everything for me. Copying pictures and looking at my hands, to name a few. But the one thing that always helped is references. References. That was a Larry David, Bernie Sanders voice. sort of. (laughs) Yeah, it was a little bit Larry David. (laughs) What? Who? What? That's the (laughs) The voice sounds as fluffy as his white hair. Um, <laughs> that's great. So, yeah, he's he's talking about gesture drawing, which is an interesting thing. So gesture is not actually, you know, using a lot of control. You're freeing up your, your wrist and your hand and you're sort of just letting it flow. And you're, you're doing the the basic kind of shape of the pose rather than being too hung up on you know where all the limbs are going and all this kind of thing you're just going just doing a the feeling you get from the pose the impression which is a good way of drawing it's, it's yeah. very free especially good for someone like me who is very stiff in the way I uh, depict figures so it's a good tip there all right. mm-hmm. oh next up we have o- Ogia again um, god I can't keep track I think it's Pit Oh no, it's Tans. It's Tans, I think. It's Tans. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I brought my doll at a hobby shop. I got a hand like that to him. It's absolutely useless. <laughs> Everyone I... hates it. <laughs> Real life models is a better option or 3D like mentioned earlier if wanting to do proper anatomy. If we were to relate on those stiff things, we would all be doomed. 
<laughs> I guess my significant other <laughs> to pose for me sometimes <laughs> to help out with TikTok poses. It helps. And if if they don't pose, oh, then she uses good. the probulator on them. Yeah, that was some kind of creepy <laughs> robot. Yeah. Oh, I was I was going for a crazy Russian hacker voice from YouTube. But I... <laughs> uh, that was, that was gl- glorious. Glorious. <laughs> glorious. Glorious. Uh, yeah. So next up we have the albino ginger and that is Mm. damn it okay so I read Kim Beans it's Pit (laughs) fuck (laughs) stop making me participate (laughs) okay alright I'll Albino, or as 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 uh, says it, albino ginger. Okay, I had one of those genetic generic wooden <laughs> mark maquettes. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> I didn't find it too useful. It didn't seem to work like actual human anatomy. Here's a fun game to play with one. Set it in an odd pose and see if your friend can copy it with their real body. If you have a friend, <laughs> so. I love that everyone universally hates on that damn thing (laughs) (laughs) alright Avart Avart I've I've got to read Avart ooh okay so Avart says I use a lot of references my style is based on manga but more realistic one I draw big eyes and exaggerated gestures once in a while I mostly get references from pictures of real people and scenarios which I believe is well my style I tend to emphasize the body curves of the women (laughs) I draw but always keeping the body proportions I also use 3D models within my software when a pose is hard to figure out. My first challenge is to create a good looking drawing. My next challenge is to shade properly, but that's another story. Oh, my goodness me. Avat, the explorer from <laughs> from the colonies. <laughs> And Avar does the comic called The Gloom. Oh, The Gloom. Very good. We didn't give people their shouts out. Um, Albino Ginger does a comic. I'm trying to look at Albino Ginger's most recent. That was a couple of various short comics. Snow Black. Oh, how groovy. Oh, the glam- Albino <laughs> Ginger, The Life and Times of a Ginger Artist. <laughs> Did, did and you the see, biblical setter. Did you see um, uh, Avart's uh, profile picture? It looks like the guy from uh, what was that movie? Uh, Hellraiser. The um, the like pinhead or Jack Cotton. <laughs> the the guy who who is like the real villain, not pinhead, but the uh, the smooth American guy who's the real villain. Okay, I didn't know if that was actually Avart's self portrait. I think it is. I think Avat is actually the guy That's from Hellraiser. Who it was. He's actually the guy from the Hellraiser. Skinless yeah, that, man. Yeah. That's scary, scary thought. The skinless man. Yeah. He's just Creepy. Waiting there to kill us all. <laughs> Lead all over his artwork. And Udur, oh dear, does a, a comic called Extinct. Oh, yeah. That's the most recent, recent comic. Just to give the people a little. You know, a little yeah, which we have featured. I up. featured it. I certainly did. And. It, the music was done for it by Mr. Gum Willis. So, yeah. Awesome. So there we are. What about C.D. Malcolm? What does C.D. Malcolm do? C.D. Malcolm, oh, what's the name of the comic? He's got that superhero character. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember. Lightning Boy? No, it's, not, it's a girl. Solar Cell. Solar no, cell. No, no, that that's <laughs> that has that's no kind of what I said. that that one. So, I think it's yeah, it is solar cell. Yeah, okay. 
I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> soul cell. <laughs> like soft cell, but uh but more solar. Yeah, without the tainted love. Uh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, I, I, I get it. No, I did. It just took me a minute. Yeah, soft cell. <laughs> I knew the song. I just didn't know the remember the name of the band. I had. <laughs> uh all right. Yeah, all geniuses and Kim Luster, which you know we all know Kim and her fantastic comic. Um, yes. Yes, the God Strain just ended. Yeah, it's a shame. great comic. Yes, and Cam, of course, the Camics. Yeah, Camics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Morgan has, I think, his comic is called Morgan. Morgan's art. Yep, and Bravo with uh, dragons with breasts and stuff. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I don't think Bravo has a comic. Yeah, I, no. th- I think you're right there. Yeah, he... yeah, he doesn't do them anymore. No, I'm kidding, of course. It's King of Swords. That's it. That's Sword King. King. The best yes. comic ever. There is, there is no uh, comic that sort of compares with that on, on the duck. It's just, there is that. You look at that, and you don't have to see any more comics. So that is the, the... Or, or friends or relatives. With still every need. <laughs> Yes, just look at that. Have it as your yeah. Bible. You know, read a page from it every night mm-hmm. before bed, before breakfast, mm-hmm. before going to the toilet. Even. But before we get carried <laughs> away up our own, and bones, you can figure out the rest on your own, I'm sure. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> we have some Bravo to read up. Yeah, um, speaking yes. of whither, what's that, Tansy? No, go on. I was just being. I was running a commentary. <laughs> oh, okay. Nobody... Commentary on the comments. Yeah. Yes. Well, Bravo eleven oh two, of course. Um, King of Swords. He says, "Get a full range." I haven't done this voice in a while. You reminded me of it. Yeah. <laughs> Get a full range, one twelfth scale action figure. Okay. They actually make ones now, specifically for manga artists. You can find them on Amazon. There's also art buck figures like the Grey Guys from my Robophomoids comics. Double jointed, they twist and even shrug and slouch, and they pay a higher tax rate than their billionaire boss. <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool to flex the shoulders in to give it a bad posture and not fix it for the whole comic. Remember, real people are very rarely straight up and down, side to side. They're always skewed and bent, balancing their weight back and forth. Dancers are often bad examples to use for life drawing as their pose, as their poise, not pose, can be so artificial, and yet they still do not have Guaranteed healthcare as a right, like the rest of the world. Do you want a runway model, a ballerina, or Jane, the girl next door? It's up to you. I almost always pose my figures slightly bent in at the waist to avoid straight up and down posture. Most people, if not in a military formation, just do not throw their shoulders back. Yeah. Good yeah, advice. interesting. That's, that's the subtle things, and he, you know, so everyone has his poseable uh, dolls in his comics. Yeah, so everyone should be slouching things like, like this, curled over, well, laid down with the the weight of the world. It is good <laughs> advice. Yeah, when when I do my characters, yeah. often I uh, I draw some of the uh, them like that, and it, it gives a. a they're, they're a bit more personality and a bit more um, realism because you can do someone who's uh, if everyone's sort of standing up straight with their chest out you know like heroic sort of characters they don't really look very real <laughs> so. well, or, or they look or they look uh, conceited posturing posers which, which mm. can be good can be good for some characters yeah you that's the characteristic that. you want yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to realize well, that's what they're putting across. They're not being heroic; they're being dicks. <laughs> and if you want, if you want to draw any of those from 
uh, natural uh, environment of um, you know live live models and everything you can always go to Mykonos in Greece and you will see a lot of those <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are the other the other ones. They like and, and you also will be able to see all the masses <laughs> that you will ever want. Oh so God. Uh, be an artist and, and, and go there and, and see people walking unnaturally <laughs> for <survivorship>. Oh <laughs> God. Uh, all right, so next up we have Amelia P. Amelia P does a, a beautiful comic. I was just having a look at it, and I just did not take uh, into account of the name. So Amelia P does... Amelius, isn't she? No, no. Amelia P is a new comic artist who joined the site uh. just, just a couple of weeks ago, and I deleted her account straight away. Because I was, I was getting rid of the um, the spammers, and I accidentally included Amelia's account there, and she uh, oh, uh, contacted me, and I said, oh, "I'm so sorry. Thank you for for contacting me about this." And yeah, I, I said it was an accident, and she came back and put her comic on, and it's called "Comics by Amelia P." And it's a, a really professional looking piece of work. It looks really cool. So check out comics by Amelia P. So who who should we get? Oh to wow! Read really good, Amelia P. Um, pit pit face. Ah. Oh, we could get Tans. Amelia Pitt. Why why would you get Tans? <laughs> your Cause, name? Because because <laughs> Pitt is Pitt is being too reluctant. <laughs> okay. Oh so. So you are saying that I'm being too forthcoming and I have been spoiling it. <laughs> it's such a balancing act, isn't it? So I... Too reluctant, <laughs> too forthcoming. Tance, Tance is, okay. is, is more reliable. <laughs> okay. First, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is my middle name. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Amelia P says, Do you have any figure drawing advice? I have one. The silhouette or the form is one of the most important points which will put together the whole image. <laughs> Modeling 3D in the digital way or in polyclay in the quote-unquote analogical way helped me a lot to memorize forms and anatomy. So my figure drawing advice is everyone has different ways to learn and if you understand your own process, you'll get... Better in no time, modeling your own figure drawing can help depending can help depending if your learning process is compatible with that. Awesome. Take that. <laughs> oh, very nice. That's like uh, see, <laughs> see that was good. You took your rage and you've turned it into something. <laughs> yeah. exactly. But I like how you pull back and you get quieter <laughs> and then you get more aggressive and then you pull back. <laughs> and you get, like, <laughs> no, it's it's um, it's my my cunning plan to wake up everyone that has uh, managed to listen to this part. So <laughs> now everyone's awake. So you are like, what? Start. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Like, okay, okay. I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pitt, are you awake enough to give us Morgan? I can do it. I'll play. I'll do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just so that my name can show up in the uh, in the in the credits at the end. <laughs> yeah, you want to okay. get get paid for this and bring your papers in. Yeah, all right, it's oh, again. <clears throat> your ozone. Mind you, what I got to your epic <laughs> news group. <laughs> uh, dot binary dot pictures dot erotica dot cartoons dot original art. See, this is already winning. And <laughs> some of the artists, so, uh, and some of the artists would draw these unbelievable giant boobs, like huge golden titties, all over the place. <laughs> in the face, giving you a minor concussion. You know, like a like a like a. Like like one of those star boxers, you know, a heavyweight champion. <laughs> Pities like that. And there was always someone who wanted them bigger. <laughs> also, the London Sun had a website 
he had pictures of Kurt and former page three girls. And some of the naturally well endowed could hit the uncanny boob valley you mentioned. <laughs> Most when filmed from the front were okay, but when shot from the side, oh, kooka bugga, you could see the effects <laughs> of weight and gravity stretching them like silly putty out so they uh, almost resembled hound dog ears. Yeah, uh, that's a sexy look. Wink, winky eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was Tyler made for you. I can't believe it. Ow! Fuck! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Are you okay? Oh, I moved my foot and it, it, like, pulled my earbuds out of my ear so quick. It just, it felt oh, like jank. It's like destroyed from pressure from being under the sea too long <laughs> oh my lord <laughs> oh goodness me well I, I should read out the last few then me from, and they're from me so that's a, it's a nice little bit of synchronicity there um, oh what a twist <laughs> what a twist <laughs> 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 okay so I say hmm yes silhouettes I quite forgot them for my list. Instead of drawing the limbs and the outline of the figure, just draw the rough shape instead. That can give you a more real appearance and you're not as hung up on the construction. Morgan, that's uh, quite funny, my dear old chap. Of course, wearing a coat or a big jumper that giant boobers actually gives the woman a rather circular figure so that's not ideal for the character bravo i prefer to tilt the hips contraposto is a beautiful classic mode to use as a base it gives you a subtle dynamic asymmetry some artists make characters bent at the knees i don't really get that it looks goofy they used to do that in scooby-doo a lot they and uh, Space Ghost <laughs> Coast to Coast so there we are That that is all our advice from our fantastic people thank you very much for the contributions guys I love them and of course Baines, Tans Pitsy your amazing mm-hmm. reading performances really improved mm-hmm. <laughs> And I think Yay. what's Pitt doing? Practicing her plastic surgery uh, movements. When she yeah. <laughs> her face, get her lips stretched out. <laughs> like silly putty or something like that. <laughs> Yo. Uh, oh, it was all fantastic. You you guys really knocked it out of the park. All right. Thanks for Hooray. being on Crackcast number 334. Thank you.